In this video we are going to look at the deck group of some covering spaces, in other words the group of covering isomorphisms from a covering space to itself, and we are going to make some observations which leads us to the idea of a normal covering space, a regular covering space, um, which are somehow the ones that have the biggest possible deck groups they could have. So the example that I want to start with uh, is the cover of the circle by the circle which just sends a unit complex number z to z to the n. But what are the covering transformations from this guy to itself? Well, they're the maps f and z such that if I go along here and then down z e f and z to the n that's the same as just going straight down. So in other words f of z is related to z just by multiplication by some nth root of unity. This mu is one of the nth roots of unity. Okay, so this defines a covering transformation, in fact, and any covering transformation has to have this form. Uh, so we see that the deck group of this cover, which I think I was calling Pn, um, is just the group of nth roots of unity, in other words, the group z over n cyclic group of order n. Hmm. I want to compute one more thing here which is if I take the fundamental group of S1 and I push it forwards under Pn, under the covering map, I get a subgroup of pi1 of S1 and in this example I just get the loops that wrap a multiple of n times around. We saw this in the last video. So we get this subgroup of z which is pi 1 s1. And what I want you to notice is that this guy and this guy are very closely related. In other words the deck group in this example is isomorphic to z over the subgroup nz. In other words it's pi 1 of the base s1 divided by p star pi 1 of y where y is also s1 in this particular example. Hmm. Cool. Let's try another example. Uh, let's try the covering space of the circle by the reals, which I'm just going to call P. This is uh, x maps to e to the 2 pi i x. What are the covering transformations? Well, they're the maps f such that e to the 2 pi i f of x equals uh, e to the 2 pi i x. So that tells us f of x equals x plus some integer, right? So the only way that this equation can hold is if f of x is x plus an integer. So again, this defines a covering transformation for each n, and we get that the deck group of this covering space is the integers. Now again, what happens if we take p star pi 1 r? Well, we get the trivial group inside 
z, which is the fundamental group of the circle. And again, the deck group here, z, is the quotient of z by nothing, right? Is this is equal to pi 1 s1 divided by p star pi 1 r. The r is simply connected. So is this a general phenomenon? Can we always figure out the deck group just by taking the fundamental group of the base and dividing out by the subgroup that we get by pushing forward the fundamental group of the covering space? Well, of course, the answer is no. That would be too easy. Maths is always very nice, but it's never too nice, and that would be too nice. So the problem is that this guy might not be a normal subgroup of pi 1 of x. So the push forward of the fundamental group of the covering space might not be normal inside the fundamental group downstairs might fail to be a normal subgroup. And if it's not normal, we can't take a quotient by it. Right, quotients like this one require the subgroup to be a normal subgroup. If it's not normal, we can still make sense of this as a set of cosets, but it doesn't have a natural group structure. So our conjecture that the deck group is equal to this is, is not true always. It's true in these examples, and it's true more generally if p star pi 1 y y is a normal subgroup. So definition, um, we say y is a normal or sometimes regular or sometimes Galois, any of these words will do, cover if uh, p star pi 1 y based at y is normal inside pi 1 x based at x. So normal subgroups, you know, that's a nice algebraic condition on subgroups. But it turns out there's a really nice geometric or topological characterization of when a, a covering space is a, a normal cover, which in some sense they're the, they're the most symmetric covers. So in other words, the deck group is as big as it possibly could be. So that's what we're going to prove next. So lemma. Um, the covering space. y is normal if and only if its deck group, the group of covering isomorphisms from y to itself, acts transitively on p inverse of x for some x. So what's going on here? First note that the deck transformation always acts on p inverse of x. Because if f is a deck transformation, then f of y, if I project that down, what I get is p of y because the condition of being a deck transformation from p to p says exactly that p compose f equals p. So in other words, if we start projecting down to x, so p of y equals x, then p of f of y equals x. So f preserves the fiber of x. Moreover, f in the 
the deck transformation group is determined uniquely it's a key um, by the value f of y where y is some fixed element in p inverse of x this is simply because a covering transformation is uniquely determined by its value at a single point this is something we saw in the last video it's essentially the uniqueness theorem for lifts because you can think of a covering transformation as a lift of a covering map along another covering map so this is saying we have an action and the action uh, of a single element is determined by its value on a single uh, point y right so f is determined by its value on y so to say this group acts transitively says it's as big as it could possibly be because what i'm saying is that for each value that f of y could possibly take there is an f that takes that value if two f's take the same value f of y then they agree by this uniqueness statement so transitivity of this action is that the deck group is the maximal as large as it could be so this is saying this lemma is saying normal covers have you know lots of symmetries maximally symmetric If we return to our two examples at the top, this first one, you know, you can draw, if n equals 3, for example, you can draw a kind of vague picture of what this covering map looks like. The pre images of this line here, of these three guys, the pre image of this, this point marked by this line, and this, these three points, and there's a threefold rotation. Like a cyclic group of order three acting on the covering space it's like symmetries in the cover and in general you get the action of the um, nth roots of unity the deck group acts by symmetries here in this covering space the picture is like this that we have a translation by one in the r direction in the covering space which is an action of the integers by deck transformations on the reals so you can see this is a very symmetric covering space it's got a z action that acts transitively on the integers right you can translate any integer to any other integer up here we have a cyclic group action you can rotate any root of unity to any other root of unity nth root of unity so these guys are normal covers. Before I prove the lemma, let me draw you a covering space which is not normal. So we'll turn to our old friend, the figure eight. And I don't know, let's... Um, draw something like this does this okay this is a covering space it's a three to one cover you can 
can see the cross point has three pre-images here, here, and here. They're all four valent vertices. They've all got exactly two red edges, one in, one out, and exactly two blue edges, one in, one out. But I claim this is not a normal cover. Why is it not normal? Well, you can kind of see it's not very symmetric, right? There's this node here that has a loop going you know, attached to it, and this this uh, node has no loop attached to it. So that's kind of roughly speaking why it's not normal. More precisely, any deck transformation f necessarily fixes this point, which I'll call y. Because, being a deck transformation, it has to take this loop to another loop that's just kind of one red edge looping back to itself. And there's no other red edges in the diagram that do that. So it has to take this red edge to this red edge, so it has to take this point Y to itself. But if a deck transformation is determined by its value at a single point, and it fixes a point, then it has to agree with the identity, because the identity is also a deck transformation that fixes a point. So this tells us f equals the identity by uniqueness. So the only deck transformation of this cover is the identity. So that doesn't act transitively because it doesn't take from this y to this point, say y prime, or to this point y prime prime. So let's prove the lemma. Start a new page. Proof of the lemma. And I want to start by assuming um, this condition that the deck group acts transitively and deduce that the subgroup is normal. So what I want to do is I want to pick some hom homotopy class beta in pi 1 x x and I want to conjugate uh, p star pi 1 y y by beta this chosen homotopy class. Obviously, if this is a normal subgroup, we just get p star pi 1 y y. That's what we want to prove. So we need to show beta p star pi 1 y y beta inverse equals p star pi 1 y y. At some point in class, we saw that beta p star pi 1 y y beta inverse is just p star pi 1 y at sigma beta y, where this is the monodromy around beta. This shouldn't be too surprising if you change base point from y to sigma beta y, you end up conjugating and then when you project you get beta again. So that's roughly how this goes, but we, we've seen this in class. Um, so what we'd like to do is to prove that this subgroup here is equal to p star pi 1 y at y. Well we have to use this fact that the deck group acts transitively, so there exists a deck transformation such that f of y equals sigma beta of y, so the monodromy is really realized by a deck transformation. And 
Dieck transformations are homeomorphisms. So F star, which goes from pi 1 of y based at little y to pi 1 of y based at sigma beta of y is an isomorphism. Because right, f is a homeomorphism. And we also know that p composed f equals p because f is a, a covering transformation from p to itself. So that tells us that p star composed f star equals p star. So we can start piecing this all together. We get p star f star pi 1 y based at y equals p star pi 1 y based at sigma y, so sigma beta y, right? Because this f star is an isomorphism from pi 1 y at y to pi 1 y at sigma beta y. And we use this equation to say, just get rid of the f. This is p star pi 1 y based at y. OK, so that shows that beta p star pi 1 y y beta inverse equals p star pi 1 y based at y. So this is a normal subgroup. Conversely, if, uh, if we have a normal subgroup, p star pi 1 y based at y, then it's equal to beta p star pi 1 y based at y beta inverse, which is, as we said, p star pi 1 y based at sigma beta y. So these two subgroups are equal. And if you go back and look at the existence and uniqueness theorem for covering transformations, this equality of subgroups as subgroups of pi 1x tells us there exists a covering transformation, a covering isomorphism from y to y such that f of y equals sigma beta y. So this will give us transitivity provided any uh, point in P inverse X can be realized as sigma beta Y. So um, if every point in P inverse X can be written as sigma beta y, then we're done. And here, I realize that, again, we needed a condition that I omitted earlier on. I should really say a, a connected covering space. So this is a path connected. I always forget this one. All right, so it's a path connected covering space. Um, so if y is path connected, then given any point y prime in P inverse x, you can pick a path gamma from y to y prime, project it to get beta, which is P composed gamma, um, such that, by definition, of the monodromy, sigma beta of y equals y prime. So that does it. So if you have a path connected covering space, then the subgroup you get is normal if and only if the deck group acts transitively. 
Okay, in the next video, we will see what to write instead of this for the deck group when p star pi 1 of y is not a normal subgroup. There's still a formula you can write down, and we'll see that and prove it next time.